Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to make a quick video for you to show you how to or just get your mind going on how to work with the CNC software. We're going to use Easel and VCarve. VCarve is what we have on our desktops. Easel is web-based that you can use anywhere as long as you got internet. So a couple things for you. We have the list on here. Uh, you can see on the screen of all the criteria you must have with your design. Remember, as we stated earlier in the packet, you have 140 square inches. Uh, to work with. So you can have different rectangular uh, designs, you can have a circular design, uh, however you want to do it. Remember, between a half inch and three fourths inch thick is what we want you to do with the wood. Um, so have fun with this. Come up with your own designs. Before you get to this, you should have your sketch, your idea of what you want to do. This is, I'm just going to show you some, some ways you can work with it. Okay, remember, two to four sets of holes, 120 holes per set, eighth inch diameter, there needs to be one pegging out hole at the end because you need 121 points to win. Um, you can have any bends and paths as you want in it. Just make sure it's symmetrical. Rows need to be next to each other or symmetrically around if you're going to do some sort of cool pattern. Um, have at least two to three holes uh, at the starting area for the pegs. And if you want to make a little section where you keep track of your series wins, you guys can do that if you want. That's an option. Like I said, there's another video here you can watch, and there's also examples of boards you can see. I'm sure you can find tons of stuff online if you just search yourself. Okay, let's jump into easel. First, I want to show you some ones that I've made before. Um, these are longer ones, bigger ones, but um, essentially they worked out the way I wanted to. I was creative with the way I made my arc. Um, I kind of laid them out and then spread them out as high as I wanted to and then space them as I went. Did this all by eye. I think it turned out pretty nice. The trickiest part here is making sure you have enough of a gap in between the holes so that when the CNC machine starts drilling them, they don't get so close that the holes kind of connect and it looks bad. So trying to find that happy medium of space where you want them to be, that's what you got to work on. So let's say I have a new project here that I'm going to do my cribbage board. To meet my expectations, I have 16 by 8, or sorry, criteria, 16 by 8 by 3 fourths. So I kind of have to think about where I want my pattern to go. I know I'm going to want to start up here. So what I want to do is zoom in on the space I have starting. So I have some nice uh, coordinate grids here to help me with. And first thing I'm going to want to do is think about my circles. So I'm going to make my circle. Again, a little big, two inches. Let's do it an eighth width. Eighth inch is 0.125 by a height of 0.125. Well, that didn't save here for the width. There we go. So that's our that's our our circles. Okay, we're gonna need those for all our pegs. So again, I said we're gonna have a starting of two to three. So I'm gonna copy and paste once I have my circle. You'll see that it lines it up really nice next to each other. So now I got to think about what gap I want. So I use the keyboard and just try to feel out the the spacing I want. That's the way I it works for me. And and I'm gonna do that again here. So I'm gonna put a space of seven dashes in between the dots. Four, five, six, seven, and I'm going to do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's my starting uh, pegs for my my starting section, and I'm going to be going this way on my pattern. So I'm going to do two. Uh, this one I'll do. Um, I'll do three. So I'm going to copy and paste. Um, what I want to do is do three rows. So I'm going to get these lined up on top of each other. And I'm right against each other there. I'm going to go down five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do six. That'll be my gap. Copy and paste. I'll line them up again on top of each other. Right next to each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. So that's my starting area. Now, from here, I'm just going to use the one dot again. Copy and paste. And I give myself a gap before we actually start making our pattern. So let's start it here. So again, I'm going to want groups of five. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is copy and paste. I'm going to start to put together my three, keep them as groups of three, my three rows. So we got that on top of each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Copy and paste. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And that's my first set of three. Okay. Now I'm going to copy and paste. And um, I think I did seven. 
This way as well. Yep. Copy and paste. Seven. Copy and paste. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one more time. Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's important that you are consistent in how you're doing this. Three, four, five. So I got my groups of five. So I have three rows that have a group of five. So so far each each group has five of them. Now I can copy and paste the whole group. And now I want to put a larger gap in between them because I want my groups of five. So I did seven, so why don't I do 14 this time? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, and you can see how there's a wider gap and you can just keep going down the line. Um, and actually, if I wanted to, I could do 10. Why not? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And I can just keep going uh, to follow my pattern however I want to do it. Okay. So the other thing, though, is then when I get to how I want to maybe turn a path, you should have an idea where you want your next group of dashes to go. So let's say I want my pattern to go somewhere over here. Let's try to keep it consistent. I have two off. We'll do two off over here. Line them up. Okay. So I'm going to want to do a group of five in this spot, but I'm going to have to arc it. So with this one, I'm going to copy and paste. I know that um, the one group that I'm going to have can be uh, close to the beginning kind of where that 14 is off. So I'm going to go make sure I get my 14. 13, 14, so I still got my same gap. And then I might as well do the same thing here and set, zoom in a little more so I'm only picking what I want. All right, well. That's how it's going to be. It's how it's going to be. I can move them, though. So that's the nice perk of it. All right. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So now that I got that, I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. And these, I'm going to want to curve it a little bit. So I'm going to move them 90 degrees. And I'm probably going to want to stretch them out. So if that's the case, I actually I'll keep them that way. These, because they don't seem to be working right, <laughs> I'm just going to manually delete a couple so I don't have a big chunk. Um, then I just need to kind of curve these, as I think makes most sense. So let's do, uh, let's change the angle to 30. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to highlight that, I guess. Get rid of that one, that one, that one. Get rid of that one, that, those two. Oh, look at that. That's cool. And now I'm going to turn these. Three hundred sixty. So let's do a little too far. Let's do three hundred thirty. And now I have a pattern that I think looks pretty good. I like it. I can change it. I can adjust it. Even if I want, I could take these three and try to move these up a little bit or maybe make the gap um, a little different. I just got to move this one back. Okay. Maybe I want to push these in a little more, whatever you want to do, just to kind of make it look how you want it. Okay. So just make sure you're keeping your pattern. This keeps them in a straight line. This is symmetrical. This is what we're looking for. All right, so enough with easel. Let's go ahead and look at vCarve, which we have on the desktops. This one I'm going to do 18 by 8. So this one you can try to set a pattern ahead of time. Again, to save time on looking at the pattern, just want to show you this is a good video to follow. But mine, I'm just going to kind of show you how I would start just to kind of get it create, get the creative going. Let's say I want to go around the square or the rectangle. That's how I want to have it set up. So I have my pattern ahead of time, how I want it, where I want it to go. Um, and if, even if you want, you can use these straight lines just to kind of keep a pattern. This is always nice to do. Let's move my 
face out of the way. This is always nice to try to keep things symmetrical. You're like, hey, I want to go. I want to go and kind of follow this. Uh, the nice thing about that is I'll close it. The nice thing about this is you now have a path that you want to follow, and it's just going to kind of help you to stay guided, uh, make sure everything is symmetrical. But this one I just want to do two. So I'm going to zoom in. I just want to do a two-pather. Um, and I'm going to focus in on um, starting here with my dots. So I'm going to go to circle. I want a 0.125, an eighth of an inch. Um, we can start it wherever. This is a center point. So I'm going to create it. Here it is. I'm going to close it. So this one I'm going to start um, just by doing um, this one. I'm just going to start doing my pattern. I'm not going to worry about the start and everything. I can adjust that later. But I want to use the straight line as kind of my path. So I'm going to go off the path. I want to go, I don't know, three or four up. Let's do three. Okay. And I'm going to copy and paste. Go to the other side of the line to keep it symmetrical. One, two, three. There we go. I got two of them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, highlight one of them, make a copy. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I like seven. Multiple to seven today. Get it to the edge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And just keep going. I make my make my set now that I got two. I can do two off here. Just make sure I'm consistent. Seven. Same here. Copy and paste. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now I just need to do one more to make my group of five. And same here. And then I have my group of five, and now I can zoom out and I can keep the pattern going along my path. Um, if I want, I can just make sure I get these going. And again, this one, I did multiple seven, so I'm going to do 14 this time to the next group. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I have a nice set there. Do the same thing here. And I can just keep going along and follow my path. Okay. Now let's say we get to a corner here and we want to try to figure out the corner. So um, I'm going to highlight these like I'm going to go through the corner. There we go. Let's move these all the way down. Keep them right along that line. I get down to here. Whew, it's a lot further down than I thought it was going to be. And I want to start curving my, my corner. Uh, I'm going to need to get to a point where I feel like, how am I going to curve it? And I'm going to want to think about how many I want to have on each curve. Now, remember, the nice thing with the odd number is you can put two um, kind of in the center of the, of the line. Copy and paste. Let's move that over. But I don't need this line again, so I'll delete that. And now from here, I can kind of set my, let's say these are the, the middle ones. I can set one kind of off the corner here. And I can go, I can go over one, up one, over one, up one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do the same thing this way, but the opposite. One, two, three, five. So I have my two there. And then I can try to set two on each side of it where I'd want them to be. These two. Notice I'm going to go up a little bit. And then just kind of play with it. And just kind of see where it makes most sense for you to have them kind of line up right and just kind of play with it and see which way it looks best to you and then for these i'm going to do the same thing i'll move them over though and now i have to start going the other direction why don't they want to move move with me 
oh yeah, click on them. There we go. Now I'll move them. Now we're going a different direction though. Now we're going downward. So here's where I'm going to go to um, rotate. I'm going to rotate them 90. Enter. There we go. So close it. And now that I have them facing the way I want them to be, that's where I'm going to kind of keep my pattern going. Okay. So then I'll take the other two, highlight them, move them over to where they're even across. And again, go to rotate 90, enter. There we go. Close it. And now I'm just going to move them so that they're in line with everything. And then I can continue down my path. Now I may even want to, just to kind of fill in the gap, move this one up a little bit. Okay, I can do that. I can adjust them however I want to and just kind of keep it consistent. But have fun playing with your design and trying it out. So um, just a couple of things I want to show you on Tinkercad, uh, some or Easel, sorry, and uh, here on VCarve. That can get you working. Just remember, you got to follow the criteria we have set here for making your boards. And that's it. So have fun with it. Be creative. Um, once you have your designs done, see myself or Mr. Harris, and we'll make sure we get them into the right um, format before we put them into the CNC machine. So have fun.